Hey folks, welcome back to another installment of Inspiral Gaming Weekly. I'm Daniel, and I'm back with Robert Hodge. Hey there. This week, uh, our artwork of the week gave you a quick taste of what we're going to be talking about today, but now it's time to really dig in. This week we're going to be talking about servants. Um, so let's start it off with uh, some of the basics behind servants. Uh, Robert, how do they differ from guests gameplay-wise? So the servants offer guests kind of a retaliation mechanic. Uh, when you die, other games, you'll just have to sit back and wait for it to end to play with your friends again. In this game, you actually respawn as a servant, this creature, this strong creature, to have a second chance at winning the game. So uh, could you maybe reveal to us what the servant that was being hinted at in the artwork of the week was, and maybe uh, what kind of things he can do in the game? Yeah, so the artwork of the week is a servant called the Raven's Visage. Essentially, this creature is a manifestation of one's nightmares having to do with you know, a murder of crows, or in this specific case, uh, ravens. Um, and a, basically what he does is he can control and spawn these raven monstrous things to attack his enemies. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Um, can you say what inspired you to create the Raven's Visage? So the Raven's Visage is generally inspired by the, the bad stigma that crows and ravens have as, as bad omens. Um, it's essentially a physical manifestation of that overwhelming nightmare that they can cause to people. Okay, so the Raven's Visage is just one of the options for the servants that you might become in Dimension Door. Um, how many are you planning to have at release? Um, we're looking at at least eight. And how many uh, guests would there be? Uh, for guests, there are two for each occupation, so that's 16 total. Okay, so it's a good amount. Um, what determines which kind of servant you become when you die, though? So that's something you actually choose going into the game. When you're in the lobby, you choose certain parameters, starting with your your uh, your guest. You choose what starting equipment you have. You choose your hidden agenda, and then you choose which servant you become when you die. Okay. Um, do servants have more than one way to achieve victory, like guests do, or is it uh, limited to what servant you pick? So guests have two win conditions, the general teamwork win condition, the overall scenario, or their own hidden agenda. Servants, when you die and become a servant, you're on the mansion side. So your win condition, uh, there's two conditions a, uh, that have to be met for you to win. Uh, the first one being the very specific servant has a very specific uh, condition. Uh, but then they have to win with the mansion, meaning if the guests win, even though you fulfilled your condition as a servant, because the mansion didn't win, you didn't win. Okay, so basically so, all of the guests have to lose in order for a servant to win? Uh, essentially, yeah. They, you're, you, you switch teams when you die. Kind okay. of a thing. Okay, so then uh, could you maybe give us an example of what the win condition would be for someone like the Raven's Visage? Um, so, the Raven's Visage, he, his abilities is to send these ravens out and basically wreak havoc. Um, the thing about the ravens are they, they actually don't deal damage to your health, they deal damage to your sanity. So, the end goal for uh, the Raven's Visage is to actually drive somebody insane and thereby kill them uh, through these raven creatures. Uh, so... To put it into gameplay terms, you win with the mansion at the end of the game if uh, you and or your, your uh, raven creatures have killed at least one guest that was insane. Okay, so it doesn't have to be the last person. It nope. Just has to be one as long as one has been met, then the next step is you have to win with the mansion. Yeah. Um, so, wait, does that mean that you can't kill people with basic attacks? You have to kill them through them going insane um so being insane is like a status effect um you can kill them with your basic attacks but if they were insane if someone is insane when their sanity is zero 
Um, you die, though, when your health reaches zero. When you take a, a loss to sanity, but you're already at zero, it directly feeds into damage to health. Oh, okay. So all of this sanity damage you just dealt, it's like each guest has a buffer based on their sanity. They have basically twice as much health against you. But you can summon a ton of these monsters, and every single monster uh, guests have to make a dread check against. And if they fail, they lose one sanity. So you can see this swarm, really, the more creatures you bring into uh, the mansion will cause someone to quickly lose their sanity, causing them to go insane. And as long as you kill that guest, or at least a guest in the mansion that is insane, then you've fulfilled your condition and all you have to do is make sure that the mansion wins. Okay, um, so dread check, is that the same thing that we would have to do if you're like putting on a mask? Yep, yep. Dread check is a prominent feature of the game. Okay, and one more question. If somebody was to die from a dread check without you attacking them, does that fulfill the insane uh, requirement for the Raven's Visage? Um, or do you have to damage them and they have to die from being insane? Um, no, so you actually have to be the one to kill the, the guest. Uh, you or your raven creatures. If it's some other monster, like the Outer Fiend that we spoke about before, um, if that monster's dread check killed the the uh, guest, then you're out of luck. You gotta find a new guest to torture. Um, but as long as it's your dread check or your basic attack or um, anything that you can use that that makes you cause the damage to kill that guest, then you have considered you are considered to have fulfilled your win condition. Okay. Um, and you've mentioned these raven creatures that it summons a couple times. How exactly does the raven's visage summon these monsters? <laughs> so this is where the snowball effect occurs. Every time a guest fails their dread check, one of these appears in its space. And there are these really dinky little things. Like They're pretty frail. They're, they're really illusory demon-like ravens. They only have two health, so they're fairly easy to kill. Um, but it can get out of hand. So the Raven's Visage is actually kind of strong against multiple guests. If you have three guests versus one Raven's Visage and they all fail their dread check, now it's three guests versus three Raven creatures and the Raven's Visage. All four of them cause dread checks each turn. That can be a potential minus four sanity to each of them. And then that just escalates even further. So you really have to either get away or handle this Raven's Visage immediately okay speaking of handling uh can guests kill the servants and just get rid of them that way okay so a servant is actually immortal when you kill them they just basically lose a turn on their next turn they spend it entirely on respawning most servants have some kind of detriment to also dying so it delays not only by one turn for their wing condition but it causes another minor setback um, but they will always respawn back as they were, um, and they'll have to keep trying from there. All right, well, I have one final question. Um, kind of has nothing to do with gameplay, but I'm interested. Uh, who do the servants serve? Are they actually serving, like, the mansion? Is it a sentient mansion? Or is there, like, somebody in the mansion that that's their leader or something? So... We've discussed before about the lore uh, that there are these things called prime beings and that uh, the mansion is this central hub of all the universes where they can all connect. Uh, they share the same space in these multiple universes. Uh, the servants, they actually serve some of these prime beings. Uh, one of them fighting for power in the mansion is named Sarah the Endless Stag. And you'll learn more about her in Lysander's journal. Well, I guess that should uh, make for a interesting read for those of us that are interested in the lore. Um, I am personally excited to learn more about this endless stag of yours. Uh, but with that, I guess we have to head out to the question of the week. Um, if you could create a servant, what would it be and what would it do? So same thing as last week, just uh, let us know what you would do if you had the power to create something put in the game. And with that, I guess we'll say goodnight. So thanks for listening. I've been Daniel. And I'm Robert. Thanks for uh, coming.